good morning. <laughs> I don't know what happened to the volume. It was working and then it just went off. So if it goes off again, y'all let me know. Um, typically, I can tell if it's on because there's a bar that goes across and right now it looks good. But I'm going to wait until a couple of y'all come on and let me know that you can hear. Um, is this just adding to the old one? Let's see. Can you hear me, Pamela? Yes, they can hear now. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if this added to the other one or not. I hope not because uh, the whole front's bad. So we're going to start again. Um, Chris is home. I said Chris is home. He came in last night. Um, and it's a good thing because we've got a lot going on today. Uh, we have 19 boxes of books being delivered today. And thankfully, Chris is here and can bring those upstairs for Melissa. And, of course, he'll use a hand truck. But nonetheless, that's a lot of books. Um, it was time to order volume twos and threes. And I thought it would be good to have them delivered when me and Chris were still here so that Melissa wouldn't have to bring them up the stairs herself. That would be crazy. So I went ahead and ordered uh, two different ones for her. Um, we have made a big decision, and that is there's an apartment in the back of this house. It actually was Mama's bedroom back in the day in our living room, and they converted it into an apartment because Daddy had a couple of tenants living here before Melissa moved in, and he created that little apartment for them so he could keep them. And then they wound up, in the end, not paying to paying him, and they left, and they left the place a mess. So, Melissa was really worried about getting another tenant living in the house with her, and so me and Chris decided that we would just rent out that back apartment and have a, an actual apartment with our own stuff in it when we come home. That way, I could visit more often um, and not be right up under Melissa. So we will be in there working today, and I'm going to show you what it looks like. Yesterday, I worked and cleaned out the top cabinets in the refrigerator and the drawers in the kitchen. And to, today, we're going to be cleaning out the bottom parts of the cabinet. And uh, we went to Home Depot and took Tillman with us yesterday. He got to get out, and he was excited. And we um, ordered a... It's like a workbench that goes in a garage, but I'm going to use it as an island in that apartment. And they had chopping block tops for $98 that were four foot long. So we got one of those we're going to put on top of it. And that's cheaper than buying a nice, uh, you know, cutting board. So anyway, we... That's being delivered today. We got all the books coming today. We're going to be cleaning the apartment today. And then Chris and I will probably go to Walmart. Most of my stuff that I'm going to stock the kitchen with are stuff that we like to use. It's on my Amazon links. So I placed a big order yesterday because it's Amazon Prime. Okay. Right now when you order on Amazon, you uh, save a lot of money if you've got an Amazon Prime card. Um, and so, like I got my, uh, they have um, Instant Pots, the $100 ones right now for 50 something dollars because it's Prime Day. I'm not sure if that's still going on or not. I can hop over there right quick and tell you. Let me look. But y'all go through my links today if you order a, uh, you don't have to order everything through the link. Just enter Amazon through one of my links on the website and, um, yeah, Prime Day is still going on today. I also got a really nice curry coffee pot, really cheap, because uh, I got it in white. Um, but they got a lot of really good deals. It's the perfect time for us to stock that apartment over there. So if you'll just go to our, our website, go into Shop Now, enter any link you want to, and place your order if you've been waiting on something to get it. Some things are uh, part of Prime and are on sale, and some things are not. Last night, I ordered um, 
something i can't even remember what it was now because i ordered so much to stock the apartment but one thing i clicked on was a lightning deal that was one of the things out of my kitchen links and so i got it super cheap because the lightning deals are even better than the prime deals anyway so um that'd be great if you got anything you need from amazon order it today because it's prime day and try to go through one of my links this so anyway, I'm going to video over there for y'all today and let you see what it looks like a before and after. And this is a book that Melissa had in her kitchen. It's Elvis Presley. He's such a cutie pie. And this is Are You Hungry Tonight? It was, was copyrighted in, in um, 92, I think. And um, y'all, he ate some really good food, I have to say. A lot of y'all may have this book. Um, but it's such a cute little book and it's got some really good recipes and I'll just name some of them. Okay. Breakfast, biscuits and red eye gravy, blueberry corn muffins, sweet breakfast grits. He put sugar in his grits. Yes, he did. Uh, soups, sandwiches, and he liked, um, burnt bacon and mustard on toasted rye. He liked um, chicken a la king. It's been a long time since I made that. He also liked something called old fashioned scrapple. Have you ever had old fashioned scrapple? Boy, does it sound uh, interesting. It's like cornbread kind of with uh, pork in it. We actually have some roasted pork. Uh, we could probably make that for you guys. We've got... Uh, uh, it has, um, let's see, some of his favorite desserts was blueberry pie, cherry pie, apple pie, coconut chiffon pie. Coconut, did y'all know that chiffon pies have raw eggs in them? Also, his wedding cake was made just like I make my buttercream, except, believe it or not, listen to this. I was looking at this this morning. To make the frosting, after they beat up their butter and shortening and put in the powdered sugar, instead of adding a little bit of cream, they add egg whites. Egg whites, y'all. And vanilla extract. So there's raw eggs in their frosting. What about that for the wedding cake? How many people you think ate his wedding cake and didn't get sick from raw eggs, right? And that's something. So, a uh, really cool book. Are you hungry tonight? If you don't have it, it's got a lot of cool things in it. Hopefully, I can start making some of those recipes because some of them sound really good. Um, we got a good Bible study today. I am very sorry because I, I got some bad reviews yesterday on my Bible study, and I know it's because of the referencing that I did about uh the garbage now let me just say you shouldn't tell people they're garbage okay you shouldn't do that um when i say he uh purges us from garbage we are re uh born and regenerated and we're not garbage anymore okay um, and I know that sounds terrible, but I didn't reference the word garbage. Charles, Spen uh, Charles Spurgeon did. And the Bible doesn't reference garbage, but it does reference filthy rags. And it says our righteousness is as filthy rags. Now, our righteousness, it's because we don't, the, the only righteousness that counts for us it's not our righteousness. It's the righteousness that we have through Jesus Christ. Okay? So personally, in our flesh, we're not righteous. Okay? Um, but we are righteous through Jesus Christ. Anyway, I know that's hard. It's a hard pill to swallow for a lot of people to really find out what state of uh, state you're in when you're lost. Um, hopefully, you know because you were revealed by the Holy Spirit, your state, before you got saved. If you were not, then this uh, Bible study is for you to kind of let you see where the law stands. And um, we're going to hop into it today. Today, I did copy and paste it on the Bible study if you want to read along. 
Um, I also did yesterday's. Finally, yesterday was such a crazy day. Um, by the time I got off here, I went downstairs to see my cousin. Then we uh, took Tillman to Home Depot. I mean, it was just one thing after the other. We made a uh, homemade pizza for supper. I took some tomatoes that we brought home from the garden, put in some onion and fresh garlic, and we had some of those nan breads, you know, and so we put the tomato, onion, and garlic on there. Melissa didn't even have any Italian seasoning. She said she never makes Italian food. So um, I had to spruce it up with bell pepper. I browned some Swaggerty sausage, um, put some onion on it, salted it, and baked it. Oh, put a little parm. There's a policeman. Put some Parmesan cheese and some mozzarella cheese on it. It was really good. So that's what we had for supper last night. Uh, I'm going to make a chicken pot pie today, so in the process of all this running around today and working in the apartment, I am going to boil a chicken. Okay, so let's start Bible study today. It's so good to see everybody. I'm glad you've tuned in to Real Southern Woman. If you're new, uh, we're a, a tight-knit group that love each other and pray for each other daily. Um, we're a close family, and um, I would hope and pray that Sometimes if you listen, if you don't always agree, that you can uh, agree to disagree and always tune in anyway, um, for we all are different and we express ourselves differently. And so keep that in mind. Um, I try to speak the word of God in truth uh, right out of the Bible and I don't really sugarcoat it. And sometimes it's a hard pill to swallow, but that's what God has led me to do. And I hope that you enjoy the Bible study today. Uh, we're going to hop on over. You can follow along in the top um, in the written description if you'd like to. Uh, you can do that today because I did copy paste it on here for you. This is uh, actually not Charles Spurgeon today. This is Lewis Sperry Chafer, C-H-A-F-E-R. He has a commentary on the Blue Letter Bible.org. And it is called the Divine Estimate of the Lost, and it teaches us the state of lost people. And if we are lost, it also will show us, and hopefully the Holy Spirit would reveal to us, our state. Um, this is chapter 2 uh, of his commentary. And I have linked in the description post a link to that, so you can read the whole thing if you want to. It says, the Bible sharply distinguishes between the saved and the unsaved. And in its classification, let me clean my glasses. They're really dirty. When I got my makeup on this morning, I didn't wash them like I should have. I don't have those little cloths here like I do at home on my desk to help clean my glasses. Maybe that's a little better. I'm sorry about that, y'all. No, not really, but we'll read anyway. <laughs> I've got it on a size 20 so I can see it good. Um, the Bible sharply distinguishes between the saved and the unsaved, and it is, and in its classification of essential of an essential requirement, it wholly ignores what may seem reasonable or unreasonable in the sphere of human life, because the book is spiritual, right? It bases its distinctions on the eternal, which means deathless. It bases its distinctions on the deathless, uh, eternal necessities and provisions within the larger sphere of the kingdom of God. So it's saying that the Bible distinguishes between saved and unsaved, okay? And um, it's about the provisions um, within a larger sphere, okay, of the kingdom of God. And here is the important issues of conduct and service. It says here the important issues of conduct and service are not first to be considered, okay? Um, the deeper reality of an entire new nature is rather the primary objective, and no good works can take its place. So um, he's letting you know that works um, are not what's considered when... Um, between saved and unsaved in the in the word of god it says it is as terrible for a church member or minister 
to be lost as it is for anyone else. Certainly, there is nothing in the fact of church membership, ordinances, or the preaching profession that can take the place of the biblical requirement for salvation or make less severe the final doom that is assured to those who reject the Savior. So what he's saying is even if you're a church member, even if you're a pastor, even if um, you've worked in the church your whole life or went to church your whole life, even if you're a member of the church, um, it doesn't make the requirements for salvation any different. And it also doesn't make the doom, the final doom for the lost, any less severe okay the five virgins who possessed every outward appearance and profession were nevertheless without the oil which is the symbol of the divine life and herein is an example in the word of god where despite all the religious ex externals they heard it said i know you not not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, this is Jesus talking, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name have done many wonderful works. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. That comes out of the book of Matthew chapter 7 verses 21 through 23. That's a, heal, a horrible thing, a reality for those that are serving God who have never truly dived in and humbled themselves and surrendered um, their heart and soul and life to Jesus Christ. Uh, they're depending on their works for salvation. Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God that ye believe on him whom he has sent. That is out of chapter, I mean, uh, book of John, chapter 6, verse 29. It says, the estate of the unsaved, and this is going to be, um, we're going to read this, and it's it's not a pretty picture. This is the estate, the, the um, existing um, condition of saved, people who are unsaved and lost, okay? The estate of the unsaved is described in the Bible by positive terms. Um, first, let me say this. Yesterday, I was trying to tell you how, where we stand when we're lost. And how, in fact, some might say that we're garbage. But really, um, more than that, we're not garbage as much as we just belong to the devil. And that's even harder for people to understand. For in this world, he is the ruler, okay? It says the estate of the unsaved is described in the Bible by positive terms. It says, for the son of man is come to seek and save that which is lost, okay? There's the whole reason Jesus was here. He came to this earth to seek and save that which is lost. Well, if you're lost, what does that really mean? And what does saved really mean? And that's what we're getting um, a good picture of through this study. And I'm going to spend the next few days on it. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Never perish, y'all. Never die, but have everlasting life. He that believes on him is not condemned. You're not condemned. You're not doomed. You're not uh, considered lost anymore. Or um, it says, but he that believes not is condemned already 
Well, you're already condemned before you even believe not because you're born into sin and you live on this earth and this what I'm about to read to you is your state okay if you have not believed on him because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God okay and this is the reason for condemning and um, it says the whole reason for being condemned or uh, I'm trying to think when I say condemned it means that your state currently uh, let me try to look up a it's hard for me sometimes to I changed this word to condemning but even that word is kind of hard for some to understand it means that uh, you're disapproved okay uh, by God and the reason why is because um, it says the light has come into the world which is Jesus Christ and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil that's the whole reason that um, the lost like their state they like not having to answer to God they like um, being able to do as they will and not feel like they're being judged so therefore they remain in darkness okay it says for everyone that do does evil hates the light neither comes to the light least less his deeds be scolded they don't want to be scolded they don't want to be told what to do they don't want to answer to God and so uh, that comes out of the book of John chapter 3 verse 16 and then 18 and 20 it says he that believes on the Son has everlasting life and he that believes not on the Son shall not see life what's sad is that you don't see life continually because you do die and not only that but you don't see an abundant life while you're here you may think that it's an abundant life and sin may be fun for a while but you're so missing out on the blessings of God it says but the wrath of God abides on them so the the wrath of God yes God hates sin and therefore his wrath abides on the lost as sad as that is uh, Jesus actually took that wrath upon himself somebody had mentioned that in one of the comments last night it was a good good way to look at it and Jesus did take all of God's wrath um, for us that believe so God's wrath is not on us that are saved but it is still on those that are lost okay it says now this is what's so hard for people to want to believe but it's in the Word of God and the Word of God is truth so listen for a minute it says you are of your father the devil these are if you're lost and never received God as your personal Savior and trusted him in your salvation and him alone it says you are of the father your father the devil and the lusts of the father your father you will always do he was a murderer from the beginning and we're talking about Satan here of course you are of your father the devil and the lust of your father you will do he was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there's no truth in him when he speaks a lie he speaks of his own for he is a liar and the father of it now it's hard to grasp that if you're lost that your father is not God it's actually the devil it's horrible to even think of it's horrible to want to believe because so many people do believe that when they're here because they do some good deeds that they're good 
But according to the word of God, you're born in sin and your father is the devil. So you have to come to the point and you really and truly are not even capable of doing that because you're so blinded from the truth because there's no spiritual part in you that wants to believe that the Holy Spirit has to show you. God sends his Holy Spirit to reveal to you your lost state. So if you're hearing these verses today and you've never seen yourself as lost or understood what it meant to be lost, then you probably didn't truly understand what it meant to be saved. So if for any reason the Holy Spirit's dealing with you today, I pray that you would open up your ears and eyes and listen and come to uh, Jesus today, okay? Because we don't want you to be in this state. We don't want anyone to be uh, serving the devil or be a child of the devil. We want you to belong to our wonderful and holy God. So it says, we're in time past. You walked according to the course of the world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. Okay. I remember when the kids were little and they were in Awana, one of the things they would tell the kids was that if you were saved, your heart was clean and beautiful. And if you were lost, you were in darkness and your heart was black and dark and bad. And of course, the children wanted a clean heart, not an ugly, dirty heart. And it is a good, really and truly, picture of your state um, when you're lost. It's, hard, it's a hard pill to swallow, and it's even harder for an adult. That's why uh, Jesus says, let the children come to me, because they're... Uh, not as uh, set in their ways and uh, stubborn and proud as you are when you're an adult. Because when we're an adult, we don't want to believe any of that. We don't want to believe that we're a child of disobedience, that we have a, a dark, ugly heart. We want to believe that we're good and that all people have some good in them. I remember even as a saved person, I had been away from God for a long time when I was in my early 20s and I believe that there was good in everybody I really thought there was and I would even say oh mama he's good oh mama there's good in everybody and and uh, I wish she had learned and knew the word of God enough although she didn't bless her heart because she chose to always be taught by other people and never um study the word of God. Mama just didn't study the word of God. She should have looked at me and said, there's none good, no, not one. Uh, but she didn't. And she would just say, no, they're not. Uh, but anyway, uh, it's just really hard for adults to want to face that that's their state. It says, but for a child, they're a lot more open to it. And that's why children are much uh, open for salvation, more open than an adult. And they do come to know Jesus at young ages a lot easier. And that's why uh, Vacation Bible School is so important because so many people do get saved in Vacation Bible School. A lot of kids go that have never been to church. It's such a blessing. But anyway, let's get back on point, right? But this is the bad part. We're right at the end. And it says um, that if you're unsaved, you're a ch child of disobedience. Okay. It says from, for from within. And this is not me talking. This is the word of God. Out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, the desire to pet possess something that belongs to someone else, which is covet covetedness. I can never say the word covetedness. 
anyway, I, I changed it. Um, when you want something that everybody else has got to the point that you just brood about it, you know, wickedness, deceit, offensive sexual desires, an evil eye, blasphemy. You make fun of God. That's what blasphemy is. Uh, or make fun of religious people or um, you have pride and foolishness. You're foolish because wisdom comes from the Word of God. Um, and if you're not reading the Word of God and you're not following the Word of God, then you're foolish. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. And this comes out of the book of Mark, chapter 7, verses 21 and 23. And we're going to end there. Um, but the good thing is, even if you're all those things, you know what? For the Son of Man has come to seek and save that which is lost. Uh, that's the whole reason Jesus came. For you and for me and for all of us that were born in sin and that have all been in that state. I was there too before I received Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. And um, for so God loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, whosoever shall believe in him should not perish, will never die, but have everlasting life. But in order to see that you need that Savior, you have to see your position, and you have to believe that you do belong to the devil. And then it's much easier for you to see that there is a heaven and that there is a hell. And it's God's will for you to be with him, his child, the child of God in heaven, than it is for you to be a child of the devil and have hell to look forward to. It's God's will that all whosoever come to him okay and all you have to do to do that is believe you don't have to do anything because anything we do is a work it's something we're doing to try to be righteous or doing to try to be saved when Jesus did all we need he hung on that cross he sacrificed his life so that we could have a life everlasting and more abundant while we live it here. He sends us the Holy Spirit to comfort us. So all you have to do is believe. He doesn't tell you to understand it. He doesn't tell you to say a prayer. He doesn't tell you to do anything but believe. Now, he does say that if the Spirit of God saves you, the same Spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead after he was uh, hung on that cross and brought him back to life is the same Spirit, Holy Spirit, that saves your soul. It's a spiritual transformation. And when that happens, you will have an everlasting life and um, belong to God. That's all you have to do is believe it. Okay? Um, and that's it. It's simple. But you have to surrender and see yourself in a lost state and know that you deserve hell. Um, and then if he does save you, you should want to shout it and tell people about it and brag on them and love on them and read his word and pray. Now, you're still going to be in your flesh, um, and you're still going to have desires of the flesh. And the only way that you can live a truly holy life, even after you're saved, is with the help of God and the Holy Spirit. Because we're in this world that belongs to the devil. We're in this world in our fleshly state, with our still our des desires. And so you have to pray. That's you talking to God. And you have to read God's word. That's him talking to you. 
in order to be strong enough to um, withstand the temptations that's going to come your way. And if you do that, you're going to have an abundant life, a wonderful life, a wonderful, happy Everything's not always perfect, for we all go through hardships. But God always uses those um, in our life to bring us closer to Him. And He also uses those as experiences that we can share with other people so that we have compassion on them and can love them and uh, relate with them. So um, even if we go through bad things, there's always something good that comes out of it. And no matter what we go through, we always have eternal life and the hope that we will see our loved ones again that have believed on him and uh, the hope that we have in an eternal life with Jesus Christ in heaven. There's nothing any better than that. There's nothing any better than getting up in the morning and knowing that you belong to God. And I pray that if uh, you are lost or you're feeling conviction when I'm going through this Bible lesson over the next few days, that you will truly surrender yourself to the Lord. Um, I do. Um, and I hope that you guys um, are enjoying the Bible study today. I am um, I was just looking to see who's here. Um, I'm going to say a prayer. We're going to end it. It was a long study today, but it was a good one. I hope that you enjoyed it. I want to get over there in that apartment and start working. And I really am. I'm probably going to have to use my um, mobile data in order to go live over there. So I'm hoping it'll come through clear, but we'll see what happens. Uh, but let's go to the Lord in prayer. We have quite a few prayer requests. I'm going to post those for you today in a separate post. Keep them in your prayers and uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much and we thank you for um, the plan of salvation. We thank you that um, even if we do live here in this world that is full of sin, and um, belongs really to the devil and his angels that you have provided a way out for us lord so that we could be with you um, in spirit and in truth and always be with you and have the hope of eternal life um, i pray for those out there that may not understand what salvation is and the lost is um, for i know i had a friend that went to church for many 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 years and couldn't really tell you what salvation meant. I pray that all of those listening and are a part of Bible study will be able to uh, get a grasp on what salvation and lost means through this uh, study. And we just thank you for the word of God and we thank you for the resources that you've given us so that we can study and learn about your word. Please be with all of the viewers um, help the ones that have special needs in prayer requests for today and yesterday and throughout the rest of the week. Uh, be with them and help them have the strength they need to get through the things that they're going through and give them hope and encouragement um, as only you can do through your Holy Spirit. Uh, we thank you for our friendship here on Real Southern Woman. And uh, we just praise you, praise you, praise you for our salvation and this escape that you have given us so that we may have hope um, and live with you forever in glory. Um, we just thank you for everything you do for us more than anything else. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Y'all have a wonderful and blessed Tuesday. And um, I'll see you later. Bye. Love you.